Hi everybody, welcome back to another video and a little bit of a story about where I've been. I've been on a sojourn, I guess, throughout country Victoria, which is the state that I live. Victoria is the state in which I live here in ye olde land of Australia, down under. Hello. And uh, went for a family holiday and instead of going overseas, we thought we would go into country Victoria and check out some of the towns. Why am I telling this story? It's because some of these country towns have pharmacies that, let's just say, stock fragrances that uh, don't have the clientele to keep those fragrances being sold. And as a result, what you get are fragrances that have been on the shelves for quite a number of years, sometimes decades as we'll find out. And today's video is on that very subject, on, on that very topic, because there we were, there I was waiting for the rest of my family. And I thought I'd wander around into a local shopping center, shopping mall, whatever you want to call it, arcade. And there was a pharmacy, lonely little pharmacy. I walked in and what do I see on the shelf? I see a bottle of Dior Homme. One of my favorite fragrances of all time, Dior Homme. There it is, sitting there, 100 ml bottle of Dior Homme. And I think to myself, well, I see these around all the time. It's it's usually the, the reformulation. But the price was very, very reasonable. Even though this was at full retail, it was actually quite cheap. So I thought, ah, oh, well, I'll take a shot. I'll take a shot. I even had a look at the batch code briefly and I looked and it and I saw the number five. I know the Dior batch codes really well. And I saw the number, I thought, oh yeah, this is a 2015. And so that means it is reformulation number three. This is the third reformulation, right? After the first famous one where they changed the bottle design. It's also been reformulated again in 2016 and then famously again in 2020 as the new Dior Homme. Now, I know a lot about this fragrance uh, because I like this fragrance a lot and I don't want to make the mistake of buying the wrong one. And it wasn't until later that I noticed some subtle differences in the packaging. And I'm going to show you what those are right now. But before I do, actually not right now because I lie, but before I do show you what those are, I'm going to show you the evolution of the Dior Homes in my collection uh, in chronological order. In chronological order. Of course, I had the original Dior Ohm, uh, this one right here, uh, first in my lineup, in my collection. As you can see, I have been using this and I do use this quite often. This isn't the first bottle. I think this is bottle number two or three. And this is from 2013, this particular bottle. And this is formulation number two. So this is the original formula of the 2011 version of Dior Homme. So that's what this is. That's what I got first. No need to worry because I also have backups as well, which I'll pull out and show you when I'm doing the comparison of the boxes. And the next one that I actually got in the, in the lineup was the very coveted or is still the very coveted Dior Homme. Parfum. Uh, this is in the 75 ml bottle. I hear that the new reformulation or new new version of this with the 100 ml bottle has not no no noticeable differences in the smell. Mm, fantastic, beautiful iris and burnt leather in that one. Great, love it absolutely. It is second in my in my rankings of the Dior arms. Um, from there, I actually picked up, uh, what was the next one I picked up? Oh yeah, I picked up, um, Dior Homme C Cologne, this one, which again, is like very lovely sort of lemonade. It even looks like lemonade. It's kind of like Sprite or 7up or something like this. Uh, very good summertime fragrance. This is a 2015 bottle. Uh, again, not much left in here because, uh, the longevity on this one is really poor like really, really poor. Even if you drench your clothes in it, it's still not that great. And it wasn't soon after that that I chanced upon like a, a deal on, on on eBay and I picked up like these five pack of 10 milliliter Dior's 
and one of which was uh, this one right here. This is a 2006. All of these fragrances that I picked up in that five pack were 10 mils, and uh, this is the 2006 formulation. As you can see, it's got like a little silver stem inside it. That's the difference between the, the black stem and the silver stem right here. I'm sure there's countless videos on YouTube talking about these things. I don't need to go into too much detail, but uh, this is the original original. I don't like this because it's a it's a plastic stem. It's not a metal stem. It's not the full presentation. And and as much as I you know like fragrances, I do like presentation, and I do like an atomizer that sprays. I don't like dabbers like what this one is, and it's difficult to do a comparison because they're really not being distributed equally. And I always think that there's always room for one more Dior Homme in the collection at any given time. So that's where I'm at. Okay, and we are back. Great, let me have a sip of, sip of coffee. Coffee. Delicious coffee. All right, where were we? And very last in my collection of Dior Hommes, I also have the uh, Dior Homme Intense. Now this bottle is not the first one that I got. It's not the first one that I got. The first one that I got, I did do a video on that as well. It was a 2020 version of Dior Homme Intense in the new bottle, which I sold because I just didn't like the smell compared to this one. So I had to crack this one open and start using this one. And this is a 2018 bottle. I've used a little bit of it. I haven't used it too much. It isn't my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. And there's a very, very glaring omission in uh, my Dior Homme lineups. I don't have Dior Homme O. It's not because of a lack of trying. It's because I just don't, I don't consider it part of the lineup. There you go. Um, Dior Homme Sport. Again, yeah, I don't, I don't really, yeah, not my thing. I really do dig the iris in Dior Um, even though it's not a genuine iris butter kind of scent. It's this synthetic sort of iris accord, this sort of makeup sort of lipstick bag kind of thing going on with a little bit of nuanced leather in the back end. I really, 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 really like it. It really plays well with my skin and I just needed, I didn't need anything actually. I just, it was just there. And I just thought, you know, let me just pick this up without knowing anything. Afterwards, when I got home, I realized something. I realized something and I haven't opened it. I haven't opened it this whole time because I want to do it, you know, live on camera with edits. Does that, does that make sense? Anyway, this, here you go. This is the packaging. This is the telltale signs. For those of you who are wanting to, buy or go on the hunt or you know look after your collection the the main thing you're going to see here is in the black box area where you've got on the big one which is the original formulation this is the 2011 formulation you've only got uh dior Ohm written in there and then eau de toilette and stuff is written outside of the black box but in the original you've got some extra writing in the black box. You got Eau de Toilette there written in the black box as well. And that's a bit of a difference that you can see if you do not have access to the batch code. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of differences. The back and the bottom look pretty much identical like this, like this. Uh, if you do have access to the batch code, then you can look those up and Dior batch codes are fairly easy to get the hang of. They're not very cryptic and there's great articles online to help you and resources online to help you figure out which year your particular Dior fragrance is from. And they're quite good in terms of batch codes. And one other thing that Dior does, they also put the formula number on the boxes as well, not on the bottles, but on the boxes. And if you can see in the bottom, bottom right hand corner there, you can see if you can see that, you'll be able to see that. It's got different formula numbers. And we'll do a little bit of a live unboxing here on camera. 
uh, sticker still on it. So this this bottle from the actual batch code, it's a 2005 bottle, which means it's been sitting there for 18 years in that pharmacy. I've 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 previously had unboxings of vintage fragrances go horribly wrong and uh, where the juice smelled like kerosene and it was half evaporated but that was you know mainly because it was sitting in someone's house and it wasn't really taken care of this i'm assuming it's it's inside a temperature controlled sort of pharmacy maybe under some uh lights but let's see what's happened i mean if there's one thing to note when you're un unwrapping these if the if the actual plastic wrapping on the outside if that's in good condition if the adhesive hasn't actually dried out and it's still holding on that's a good sign because it hasn't been around too much heat i might be eating my words but anyway unbox for the first time in 18 years wow okay open this up like so Open. And there we are. There it is. It doesn't look like it's in the best shape. Somehow there's like some... Ooh, it stinks. Okay. That's... I mean, it's looking good. Just, I don't know, why is it smelling like this? I mean, it doesn't look like there's too much has actually um, evaporated from here. So let's try it. Turn this around. Okay. Mm. Do I spray this on skin or not? Well, that's a good question. The answer is no. I do not spray it on skin. And as like every other professional, I have tester strips. So let's get a squeeze at that famous Dior atomizer. If you can see this. Oh, beautiful. And it smells gorgeous. Oh, I'm so glad that it hasn't gone off and it smells absolutely gorgeous. Oh man, that is so satisfying. Any fragrance collector or vintage hunter or anyone who's looking and and loves that thrill of the chase and when you do find one and it's and it and then the the thing the one that you find you you see that people haven't really realized what it is because they don't really know what it is because this is such a it's such a niche it's such a niche you don't expect everybody to know things about batch codes nuances about reformulations and things like that we're in such a corner of a corner of the world. Oh, amazing. Wow. I can still, I can smell like citrus uh, in the opening here. And the iris is hella more prominent. It's actually closer to Dior Homme Intense than it is to the 2011 formulation. This actually comes on a bit more leathery. Was this one comes on like irises. It's all over my fingers as well. I think it's on the mic as well. Well, that's okay. It'll be a fragrant mic. Beautiful, happy, happy days. This is finally in my hands. And that is good. And order has been restored to the world. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to be wanting me to tell you about the fragrance probably maybe i will nah i probably won't because there's been so many other reviews of this fragrance i just thought i'd share i just thought i'd share an unboxing with you and, and sort of tell you about maybe a way that you might want to find some vintage fragrances of your own at the same time as getting like a road trip in into places where you don't really travel and go to places that you've never really heard of. Like, that's exactly what we did on this trip. We went to towns that we'd never even heard the name of. I've been living in this place for over 35 years, and I, I did not know the places. I hadn't been to the towns that we went to, and we stopped, and we made an effort to stop in all the small towns, and then look at all the little knickknacks and the op shops, and go to the local sort of bakeries and cafes and things like that. Of course, there's efforts to... Efforts to sort of revamp and 
and bring these towns up to like, you know, 2023 sort of standards and stuff like that. But like, I, I find that it's, it's quaint. It's still like these, these towns still have their charm, still have their character. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And, and I'd recommend that you traverse, I guess, uh, areas in your own backyard that you haven't really explored and hit up any pharmacy that you can find uh, that might actually stock some of these instead of your rack stores or something like that, you know, promoting, uh, well, actually, uh, you, you could do whatever you like, but I think I think the, the, the thrill of the, the hunt and actually finding stuff is, uh, is, is, is satisfying. It's satisfying, especially when you know what you're looking for and you've got an eye for it uh, and, it's always good to share it with uh, people who appreciate this kind of stuff um, like you all here. So as always, thanks for watching.